Hello and welcome to this 360 degree virtual reality video around the North Down and Ards Peninsula area of County Down. We're going to be tracing the legacy and footprint of Ulster Scots settlers in this area, considering their landscape, their heritage, their history and their culture. Now, the scene that you're looking at has been captured with a 360 degree virtual camera, which means that you can look around too. You can use your mouse at home or a VR headset to explore what you're looking at. And today we're in Donaghadee, a very picturesque harbour town on the northeast part of the Ards Peninsula. And if you look to my left, you can see a map that shows you exactly where Donaghadee is located. More than 400 years ago, lots of Scottish settlers began making their way across the Irish Sea to settle in this area. That's a period known as the dawn of the Ulster Scots, a term which applies to people, to heritage and to culture. Looking out across the Irish Sea there behind us in this lovely misty day, past the Copeland Islands, somewhere out there is Scotland. And the part of Scotland that we're looking at is known as the Rins of Galloway. If you look to my right hand side, you'll be able to see a picture of the Rins of Galloway. Over there is a village called Port Patrick. Port Patrick is about 20 kilometres or just over 12 and a half miles from here. Really, it's the closest part of Scotland to Northern Ireland. If you look to my left, you'll see a nice image of Port Patrick Harbour. Now, this crossing between Port Patrick and Donaghadee actually became a very busy thoroughfare, an important sea crossing route in the 1600s, as lots of Scottish people began coming across here to start a new life under their two new landlords, Sir Hugh Montgomery and Sir James Hamilton. You can see portraits of Montgomery and Hamilton to my left and to my right. These Scottish lairds now began to bring in new tenants to settle on their lands here. These were people who would pay rents, who would establish towns and villages, who would be loyal to the king, who would speak English, and most importantly, who would begin to establish Protestant churches here in Ulster. I want you now to try and imagine how the scene must have looked 400 years ago. Looking out to sea, picture lots of wooden sailing boats coming across here. On board were these Scottish settlers. Why were they leaving Scotland? Maybe it was famine, maybe it was religious persecution, maybe the landlords were putting up the rents, maybe they were just finding it hard to make ends meet. Whatever their reason, they got onto these ships in Port Patrick, they put on everything they would need for a new life in Ulster. Maybe their animals, their clothes, their family Bibles, their farming implements, seeds to plant for their first harvest, everything that they thought they would need to begin a new life in Ulster. And now turn around and look towards the village. It certainly didn't look like this back in the day. To those first Ulster Scott settlers, there was no lighthouse at the end of the harbour. There was no pier like this. There certainly weren't the beautiful multicoloured little shops and houses, the promenade that you see nowadays. What they might have seen would have been the stump of an old tower over there where the, you can see the church tower today. They might have seen some bushes and shrubs and trees pushing back across the peninsula, a rocky shore. Over there, can you make out a little grey building on top of a green hill? Well, the green hill was certainly there. That dates back to Anglo-Norman times and it's a moat, an Anglo-Norman moat or a large green hill this would have been there when those Ulster Scots settlers first arrived here in the 1600s. And if you look now on the screen, you'll see an artist's impression of what this moat might have looked like back in the early days when the Anglo-Normans had a castle there. So the landlord of Donaghadee then was Hugh Montgomery, this Scottish laird, and he wanted to see his new settlement thrive. He built a first stone pier so that the people could trade backwards and forwards. Buildings and inns, accommodation, all began to go up along the shoreline there. While some of the Ulster Scots settlers moved off 
elsewhere on the peninsula and began to establish their own towns and villages, here in Donacadee, many of the Scots settlers stayed, where they were, within the eyesight of Scotland on a good day. Even now, you can still find a lot of their surnames in this area and a lot of Ulster Scots traditions, superstitions, beliefs, work ethic and way of life still flourish in Donacadee. Now, I want you to take a last look around this beautiful scene before we travel over to where I showed you the old church tower. Nowadays, that's a, a, quite a prominent landmark and we're going to go across and have a little look at Donacadee Church now. Hello again. So now we're standing at Donaghadee Parish Church and behind me is the church tower, which is actually the oldest part of this building. It was already hundreds of years old when Sir Hugh Montgomery arrived here in the early 1600s and began establishing his Scottish tenants on these lands. There's a red sandstone plaque just above the door and if you look to my left, you can see a photograph of it. It records the fact that Sir Hugh repaired, rebuilt this church in the year AD 1626. So now I'd like you to turn and look behind you, look back down the path to the entrance gates. Just to the right hand side of the right hand pillar, there's a very old stone. It has been weathered considerably over the centuries, but that stone records that these pillars and the gates of the time were the gift of Francis Allard. Now he was a postmaster here in the town of Donacadee about a century after Sir Hugh Montgomery came. Francis Allen was an agent for the landlord at the time and the postmaster, and he actually delivered some important mail. This was the period of the Williamite Jacobite Wars. General Schomburg was leading an advance party for William III, and Francis Allen, the postmaster here, carried the important dispatches, the important mail to General Schomburg. So have a little look now on the right hand side and you can see a photograph of that old stone when it was still legible. And now you might like to spend a little bit of time looking at some of these gravestones. Some of them are very ornate, beautifully carved and many of them bear the names of the Scottish settlers who first arrived here in the 1600s. We've put a few photographs up for you to have a look to show you some of the more interesting ones. A lot of Scottish names arrived here, new Scottish surnames, names like Allen and Adair and Barclay and Cathcart. You can see lots of these Scottish names around in the gravestones in this beautiful old burial place. It's a great location to spend a few hours just browsing, reading the epitaphs. Perhaps maybe you'll have been inspired to come here yourself, to have a look at the old stones, maybe to visit the church itself, and then after a couple of hours to head down into the town of Donacadee for some refreshments. I hope this has been an inspiration to you. Maybe you'll join us in some future episodes of our Ulster Scots virtual reality tour series. Thank you.